Hello everybody and welcome back to the fifth and final part of Blender 2 Train Sim. The basics pretty much, like I say, there will be more videos. Uh, today we're going to be learning how to export this finished asset into Train Simulator. So, we did all the preparation in the last video. If you didn't see that, then uh, go back to it and have a look if you need help. Uh, but now I'm going to be showing you how we get this lovely looking asset into Train Simulator. So, first off, what we want to do, we want to go down to our folder. We want to find our folder, go back to our main folder, and open up this one here from earlier. Now, these inside, you should be able to see the pattern now. We have map poles, and we have map sign. Now, ironically enough, I think they're, they're not quite the same. We, got, we can add an S to that, and map sign to that. Now, like I say, I really don't think that changing this file has any physical connection with these. I've been using the, them exact same entries that I had before for about two years on probably a hundred different objects. And I have never had an issue with them caused by this file. I have a feeling that this is, may actually be for, related to the old exporter rather than the new one. And therefore, I don't think they actually it actually matters too much. Um, but nonetheless, I'll leave it in there, um, and you know you can uh, you can mess about with that because it might be interesting, it might not. I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, now we've got that, uh, we can select everything, highlight everything. You want to make sure everything's highlighted because uh, otherwise, unless you remember to tick the up box, then you'll only get the object that you've got selected. Export. Go down to export. Train Sim XX IGS. Remember, if you haven't got that, check your preferences, check your add-ons, and check that this is selected. Um, the same thing will apply for this IGS options option here. Um, sorry, this one. This one's related to materials, which we you don't really need to do. You can sort this out. You can set this to a uh, TR diff or the full name. Train basic object diffuse. Again, you can set them up if you like, but I've not found that this actually makes much difference. The only ones that do make difference is transparency. If you've got an object with holes in, you want to tick transparency um, to make sure that there's actually holes in the textures. It, it's the textures, not the actual asset itself. You know, if you built, if you made a hole in the model, then it's fine. If you made a hole in the texture, then you'll want to make sure that transparency on the textures is ticked. Anyway, going back to this, export, IGS, find our folder that we've got, go back to there. I'm going to nick this, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to name that the exact same thing as what I've named this thingy, but put .IGS. Next, export IGS. I just successfully created, and you just saw 0 0.36 seconds it took to create it come up by my cursor. Now we can go back to that. You can see, indeed, there is now an IGS file in our folder. What I'm going to do quickly, I'm going to open that in a new tab. Go back to my Railworks folder. In the Railworks folder, there are two programs which you may never, which you probably never have used before. But are vital to uh, doing this process. The first of which is Blueprint Editor 2. Now I've got Reshade. Um, I had to dump the shaders that I had for Reshade. Because I was doing some really weird bloom effects on Blueprint Editor. Um, and I could barely read what I was doing. Which wasn't helpful. Um, but the other one you're going to want. You're going to want to scroll down. And you're going to want RWA's tool. I believe these are pre-installed in your train sim download. Uh, so you're going to want to launch these two. First off, you'll need to use RWA's tool. Single image conversion. Browse. From here, you're going to want to tell it where your uh, texture is. So, copy your texture directory. This is, a, again, this is a, a directory from a different model I've made. The uh, part of the gate line pack. Copy that. Textures. And now what we want to do, these two are the textures which are important. These two are the only ones that we need to concentrate on. Because these are the only ones that you'll be using as part of the model. Convert. Click the texture. Convert. 
That's our two textures converted. We're done with our WWE tool. That can go away now. I'll minimise it rather than closing it because we may find we need it again if we adapt a texture. But that is pretty much finished with. Next off, you want to click Source. Find your developer folder in here. Again, if you've just started, you'll only have one, I imagine. Go down to your developer folder and click the arrow on it. In here is obviously all your assets, all your list. You'll probably only have one. I have a lot, so I shall scroll through until I find tutorial. Bring that one down. Assets. Bring that one down. Miscellaneous. Bring that one down. Street name. Bring that. Till close. Bring that. Until we eventually get to where we want to be. Right click on the folder. Go to add new item. Up here, you should have, uh, if I can get them to appear, there we go. Audio control, blueprint, and Lua script. You want a blueprint. You want to scroll down until you get to scenery blueprint. Rename this to probably the same thing you named your IGS, just to keep it simple. A lot of people use underscores in their name. I, I, I generally don't tend to. And press OK. You'll see you've created a new folder. And if you go, a new file, and if you go into here, you see you've got a .xml file. This is going to become your bin file. Your IGS file will become your, um, well, G your geo file in the assets folder. This will become your bin file. Name. Name your asset, clearly. So it's called, um, teal close, um, street name sign. I don't know. Something like that. Then, basically just copy that into there. What I do, generally, is I put JC37, obviously the initials of my um, gaming name, just to sort of make it easier for me to find stuff. If you're going to release them, release them publicly, you can either add JC37, or, sorry, your, don't add JC37, add um, whatever your initials are. Just it, just it just basically helps you locate something. If you've downloaded something from somewhere, it helps you locate. It can also be a hindrance to other people, because if they're looking for Till Close Street name, then they're not going to be able to find it as easy, because they're not going to be looking in James Class 37, necessarily. But... For me, that's what I do. Everybody has their own method. Other doesn't matter. Description does not matter. You can add a description if you like, but it's merely for the for the um the bin file. It's there's nothing there's no other reason for it really. I think maybe it pops up in game somewhere, but I don't know. Category. Change a category. All of these categories can obviously be used for different things. Exclude from browser list is an interesting one. Because if you're making a child object of another object, it won't be allowing you to place that object individually. Personally, in this one, we will be using misc. Because that's sort of the, the file name I gave it. So I'll be using miscellaneous. That means it will appear underneath that bag icon in Train Simulator. Valid and scenarios. This basically means that you can place it in a scenario. So, for this object, it's not really required to be valid in a scenario. If you're making a temporary speed sign, or a speed restriction board, or something trackside related, a person maybe, a worker, you might want to tick that because it might be significant to have this person. This sign isn't going anywhere, and it's not going to sort of sometimes be there and sometimes not, so it doesn't matter. But for something that's variable, like uh, track works, um, maybe the old car or a bus or something, if you want them for a specific scenario, then tick valid in scenarios. Render component, primary texture name, secondary texture name, don't worry about them for now. They're not important. They're not going to cause any issues. Geometry ID. This is the most, probably the most important thing of the entire file. You're going to want to list all of these names inside here. First off. If you click, single click, so if you click on it, and then single click again, you'll get the option to sort of change the name. We don't want to change the name, we just want to copy. Follow that by a backwards slash. So assets, miscellaneous, street name is the next file, till close is the next one, and finally finish it off with till close.ags. That links it. Remember, if you've got this little thing showing here, 
it shows you that the file doesn't exist. The reference file does not exist. James L37 slash tutorial. Yep, the James L37 and the tutorial bit are added immediately. The first two folders are added immediately from source. The rest have to be added manually with with backward slashes. James L37 tutorial assets miscellaneous street name till close till close dot ig does not exist. IGS, however, does exist and it disappears. Of course, you'll get this option to open file. Uh, it tries to open it. It can't open an IGS file because it has absolutely no idea what it is. Next one, collision geometry. It's not important particularly. You can add it to a collision geometry. It basically means if your train derails or you place one on the track, uh, your train is going to hit and collide with that object. Um, now, a collision geometry can be as simple as a invisible cube around the outside of the object. It could be the actual object itself. It basically means that your object is um, able to be collided with by a train. So I'm gonna I'm gonna delete geometry. Pickable. Pickable is an important one. You want it to be pickable ideally. There are occasions where you might not want it to be pickable, but generally you're gonna want it to be pickable uh, because if you deselect pickable, it means you can't move it once you've placed it. And you want to be able to move something once you've placed it, just in case. Cast shadows, self-explanatory, it means will it cast shadows or not. Shadow type, uh, blobby or none, no shadow, blobby, shadow. Always use a blobby shadow if you want a shadow, uh, pretty much. I've never used the none um, thingy, and I can't see why I would, to be honest. External view, internal view, all views, it's literally just what what part of the train is this going to be seen in. Is this external, is it internal? It doesn't matter. For, for assets, I've never needed to change this. You could put it to all views, because you obviously want to see it from the cab as well, but I assume that's probably for when it's actually a part of a train. And again, it doesn't matter. Not entirely sure what any of this uh, palette stuff is all about. Um, I'm sure somebody can let me know. But again, I've never needed to change it. I, I probably never will either. Heat haze, I believe that's an option that was added, but never actually implemented. So... If, if, if you need to add a heat haze, then you could try, but I've never needed to again. Text, 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 yeah. Um, again, I don't think that's a important one. Uh, project light element, never used. Uh, I will show you how to create lit objects, but you don't do it through a, a projected light element. This one, again, I don't know. Detail level of range. Uh, just leave that default. I believe that's again some. I believe that's again to do with your LODs. Um, if you've got your um, highest level and lowest level. So if you've got uh, this number, it probably relates to that, I imagine. Again, I've never actually used it, so I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. It's not important. Container component. This is where you add your child objects. I will go through child objects a different day. You do not need a child object to d export a model. I won't touch on that on today. Collision components. Again, this is mostly for buffers, really, I believe. Again, it's it's it can the train collide with it if it's on the track or not. Um, again, you 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 realistically you're not going to be putting this on the track, so there's not a lot of point adding a collision to it. You can if you like, but. It, de it depends what you're making. If you're making a buffer, then you'll probably want to look into that option. I've never made a buffer, so I've never sort of looked into it as an option. Anyway, once we've done that, we can hit F8 on our keyboard. F8 exports the object we've made, and you'll see it loads 32-bit train sim uh, automatically. But this isn't train sim as you know it. This is sort of a development version of train sim that you can only access through doing this. And you'll see why it's so sort of so different. You can't, um, you, you can't maximise the size and there's no ground textures. It's literally just a test environment. So you can fly around your object and see what it's going to look like once it's actually in game. I would recommend doing an F8 export because it's a lot of effort to go through the export process. Um, find your asset in the actual full game and um do it all this this loads everything for you there's no sort of messing around whereas going through you've got to go through find it all and then if you've made a mistake you've got to then close the game and come out of that because if you make if you update an asset you have to actually close the game i believe see something like this we actually we actually have a a black texture which is, is slightly concerning because um there may be a reason why that and that might be that we haven't exported the front surface 
I do believe that is the case. Well, in that case, I do intend to do a, um, a sort of a fault finding tutorial. Um, so if, if you find any faults that I've not covered, um, let me know in the comments. This is one of them. This is quite common. Uh, you'll find that not everything's exported. All you do then, go back, select everything in your model, export, IGS, same name, export successful, press F8. It's a lot quicker to load this time because it's not got to load the actual game. Just replaces the object. There you go. There's your sign. See, if we didn't do the F8 export, we wouldn't have known that that issue was there until we actually loaded the uh, the sign up in the game. And in which case, we'd have to come all the way out of the game to fix it and put it all the way back in. Again, I'll rotate it into the sun a little bit. Just so you can see. F8, it goes back to where it was before. Child objects, you can move around using the map, using manual. You can also use the, uh, the matrix for it. I've never used the matrix for it. The matrix is horrendous. So I don't recommend it. I recommend if you can get away with doing it manually, do it manually. Uh, the best way to make a child object if you want some, if you want it in a very, very specific place, is actually to make it in the exact same place you want it in Blender, and then you don't have to move anything. It's it's pretty it's easier to do it like that. Anyway, uh, just check check over your asset. Make sure there's no holes in it. Sometimes you'll get holes where faces are incorrect. Um, if you do get a hole, I'll touch on this one quickly. If you do get a hole, let's say that um, this piece here appears invisible. Um, you can hit backface culling in Blender. Now, backface culling uh, hides any faces on the inside. So you can see, if I turn it off, and if I turn it on, you can see the inside without it on. But when it's off, you can see what this is. Backface culling turned on is how the game renders everything. So if you end up with a object that looks like this in game, just go into edit mode, mesh, normals, flip normals, or recalculate outside. And then that will fix everything. Occasionally it will it will occur if something goes wrong with your export. Once we've done that, we can simply go into F7, export that to the actual game, get the game loading. Oh yeah, you need to close that first because the game doesn't seem to like loading. You can, you can sort of force it to load with it open, but it's easier just to close that close development train simulator. And then, oh actually, let me show you a quick a quick uh, thing about development train sim. If you've made uh, a illuminated asset or you want to see how something looks like at the in the dark or in the evening or you know some other time. Come on. Sometimes it won't always load. You've got to export once or twice. Uh, if it's not ready to, to load, then it won't load sort of thing. Apparently, this is very not ready to load. I'll be back when it's all loaded. Okay, so development mode is uh, is, is back up and running. Uh, you can see the main game's loading in the background as well. Uh, it doesn't mind doing that. It doesn't mind running... It doesn't not mind loading development lo mode after... The game is loaded itself. You might get a bit of a performance drop on a lower end computer. But on a high end computer. You should be absolutely fine running both versions together. Um, anyway. Yes. Yeah, so if you come up here. You can change the season. Uh, now that will become more apparent when I talk about seasonal objects and textures. But up in this top option. You've got a clock down the bottom. Again it's very small so you can't see it. But you've also got this option here. Day night. Click it now. It's midnight. Click it again. It's midday. You've got a torch. You can turn your torch on. Oh look, you've got actually got that actually turns on a a light. I forgot that brings it on below. I do. But there is a. Uh, I thought that followed you around. But anyway, you can, you you get the point. You can uh, you can sort of see it in the in the dark. Alternatively, you can set the time manually, and uh, you can get sort of day, morning, noon, evening, whatever time. You know, you got a nice long shadow here. Okay, so. We're back in the game. We've got all this rubbish. Rulers absolutely everywhere. We want to click on the blue box with the orange arrow. Go down to here. Find your developer folder. Find your product folder. Again, you'll probably only have one in this. Click tutorial. Now, if I go into miscellaneous, I click J. You see it's the only one under J that's actually... A Allowed in the game. There we go. There's our object actually in game. 
And you can see we're fully here. We can place as many as we like. All of that rubbish. Yada, yada, yada. There we go. And that is our object in the game all complete. One final note before I finish up. If you go to your assets folder in your train sim um, install, click find your um, developer name, find your product name, and go into through all the files and stuff. You, what you'll notice is you've got these temporary folders. Um, temporary files. Before you release an asset, make sure you delete these. Uh, they're not important. It's not important to delete them. But one, it looks more professional. And two, it saves less space. It, it uses less space on uh, somebody's computer. Anything um, that's, that sort of begins in a dot bin dot something or, you know, dot geo dot something. Anything that's temporary can be deleted. Along with this blueprints.pack file, that can also be deleted. Um, in order to send it to somebody, you'd then literally just send them your... You'd, set, you'd, you'd package it so that it goes in the form of... Let's go into my external hard drive for this. Package up your asset as a uh, name. So, tutorial. This is the file you're going to be sending them. I know it's spelt wrong. It doesn't matter. You'll put a uh, readme in here. As to sort of describe how to install it. Make a new folder. Call it. Assets. Make another new folder. And name it as your developer name. Like so. And then. You can control V. Copy your asset. Into this folder. And that is your asset ready to be sent to somebody else. All they have to do is come along in their game, f download your folder, read the readme, and simply drag this file across to here into their game. And it will copy across in its own sweet time. I'm going to skip, but you get the point. If you, you Normally you'd replace and then it would be done. So there you go. That is everything. Oh, yeah, you can uh, also obviously um, get 7-zip and compress that like so. And then it's just easier to download. Uh, anyway, I hope that has uh, that has been useful. Um, I'll, like I say, I will try and do more, more, more videos. I'll try and do more videos in the future. Explain different things you can do with uh the concept of uh modeling and how you sort of create lamps uh animated objects anything you can think of i'm gonna try and cover it um there are a few things that i can't do such as lofts and sounds i don't know how to do them uh when i find out i will of course try and make a video on it don't lose <laughs> and that's pretty much it Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know in the comments if you do have any issues. And uh, if I can't, if, if I can, obviously I'll try and help you. But at some point, once I've sort of got a few issues, I'll try and make a, uh, a an issues video and how to, uh, how to rectify your problems that you might end up with. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye. Yeah.